right. Thank you for staying with Daybreak. Let's have this conversation that affects all of us. What really is ailing the health sector and how can it be fixed? That is the main question we're asking this morning. At Trevor Mbidi at Citizen TV Kenya, use the hashtag Daybreak. Let's have that conversation now. Let's hear your experiences as well and what your recommendations are going forward. Dr. Davji Atela is here, KMPDU Secretary General. Thank you for making time. Honorable Martin Owino is here, Member of Parliament for Ndewa. And Honorable Pauline Lenguris, Woman Rep Samburu, Member of the Health Committee and the National Assembly. Thank you so much for making time. Here is the reason why this conversation is important. There's been quite a number of people who've spoken about this conversation to the Senate. This is what the patients had to say in terms of the experience in different healthcare facilities. Listen. <laughs> kapiga pita kapiga pita alafu akamfuga nikamuuliza kwani umemfuga hivyo kwani hatibi ngania pia lazima ati waende wajadiliane ili wajue the be forward hakurudi alikuja asubuhi kani sauti akanya pia wewe mama hata ulipe pesa alafu ukuze ngamuuliza pesa gani na hiyo karatasi haiko imeandikwa pesa nikarudi huko kwa kulipa pesa nikamuuliza ni pesa gani inalipo akaniandikia hapo 20500 sasa nikamuuliza hii pesa yote inatoa pesa this is just one incident from Mama Travis but there's still more and Davji I'd like to hear your views on this so what goes wrong at that point we may not be healthcare practitioners ourselves, so we may not understand that when a fork gem is logged into somebody's head, if you remove it immediately, they might bleed out. But still, the simple human touch, when a doctor tells a patient that they're going to consult, and then they disappear. The next thing she knows is she's being asked for money. A day later. Is that even fair? Uh, thank you, Trevor, for that. Uh, if you look at how the... Uh, the mother to Travis is talking. It's really a very sad situation and a very sad incident. But in any hospital uh, setup, uh, if you go to the public or private, whether it's a level four, level five, level six, the person that the patient interacts with when they come to the hospital that will deal with the matters of administrations are not doctors. And they're not nurses and they're not mostly healthcare workers. Because every hospital has top gap measures. You get in, they look at administrative of you, pay this and this before they actually refer you to the to the doctors. That's what happens in most of the case. But we have a situation whereby uh, the patients or the public, whenever you go to the hospital and you see anybody in the lab coat, you believe that is a doctor. And that becomes uh, the case in this particular situation. Because at the point the doctor was coming to see this patient, they do not ask you, they don't do it with anything that is financial to any of the patients. And one thing I, I say about this uh, case, which is a very sad situation, and we know that we have quite a number of Travis in this country who face this, but they are not being put into the light. There was dysfunctional public health care from the point that this patient got an incident. Because from there, it was taken to, uh, it was to a dispensary, and then referred to Thika Level 5. Ideally, uh, Thika Level 5, according to the uh, tradition of the uh, Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Council, is a Level 5, which ought to have all uh, the uh, specialists that are needed for this particular procedure, the, the, the neurosurgeon, the anesthetologist, and even the, everything that are required. But you realize that it is lack of equipment that made this particular uh, county now to refer this particular the patient to uh, Kenyatta and this happens in quite a number of places in the country so mostly we see the dysfunctionality because of lack of investment that is needed for the health care mostly we see that the doctors have not done uh, A, B, C, D when actually it is the, uh, the, the, the investment that has been put in place to make sure that services are offered. All right. Honorable Lenguris, do the doctors have a point that the reason why there's a lot of dysfunctionality there is the lack of proper funding or investment in the healthcare? Yeah, it can be one of the reasons, but uh, looking at the case that happened in, in, in the case that is shared here, I think in the human face, the doctors lacked commitment. If you look at the healthcare system in Kenya, it's highly commercialized. 
some of us visited some hospitals here around Nairobi, but before you access to see a doctor, you ask a certain amount of money. If you don't have an insurance card, you must pay cash. If you don't have that cash, you will not be able to see the doctor. So there is, it, uh, the, the healthcare system has been highly commercialized. So I think we, we, we as members of parliament or the, the, the government has a work to do in trying to, 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 to enable people to be able to access the healthcare services. Yeah. Because if you don't have money right now, you will not be able to see a doctor. If you see that desperate case, we could not have lost the life of that child if the doctors really uh, had, had the human heart first to treat the child and maybe to ask for money later. Because I think that's the first thing that they should have done. That was an emergency case that required an, an immediate attention of, of a doctor or a specialist. Yeah. But because of the, the delays, the doctor will, will, will see the child tomorrow. I think it was really not, not, uh, not, uh, no, they didn't really handle that case with seriousness that it, it required. Yeah. yeah. Honorable, we know what are your thoughts on this? Because this is just one incident that has been brought to the limelight. There are quite a number of them that the patients say they are simply neglected. Uh, so true, Trevor. I, uh, you know, my heart goes to that mama. After caring for a child, you know, live alone the maternal journey uh, in the womb and all that. But the ER, the emergency response in this country is wanting. Partly um, is man management of the health facilities we have in responding to a case. So many people die on stretchers. Uh, and also partly the norm. You know, in medicine, the first thing you do is to stable the patient, regardless. And many institutions have put what we call codes. If you hear code blue, code red, you leave whatever you're doing, if it is not fatal, and you run and stable the patient. You don't even ask for money, not even taking records. Because sometimes, like in that child condition, you could not ask anything. You respond immediately. So what I can say to this is uh, a tip of the iceberg. M mothers are dying delivering on stretchers. But this is very unfortunate because it is happening in the highest uh, institution of care in the whole country. Yeah. So there were two issues here. One, it could be health, um, health personnel related because of course, we have few specialists and all that. Two, the system itself. Yeah. When somebody shows up with cases like that, what do you do? Mm -hmm. From watchman at the gate to the specialist, uh, specialist at the operating room. That system is what is missing in Kenya. And it is all most of the institutions. If we can get that right, even stabling that patient only would add life to the whole system. Yeah. But that's where we go wrong. Yeah. How can this system be stabilized, Dr. Davidji? Uh, you know, for one, uh, just wanted to just a bit of clarification on this uh, baby Travis. You know, when you look at uh, the reports uh, there, is that doctors uh, refused or did not attend to this patient. But then you realize that at the point that uh, the patient was brought for him to actually be taken to the theater, there has to be parameters that have to, must be stable. Uh, that's to be look, they must look at the coagulation, they must look at the blood level of this patient, they must look at every factor to show that if the patient goes to theater, they're going to survive. Otherwise, you can take somebody to theater for the mission for them to die. That's one thing that we see that Kenneth actually looked at it. But now there's an uh, aspect that we need to really make the, the public to understand that when you go to the hospital, you see the doctor. Most of the times, things will not be done exactly how you want it. You must understand the procedures before any, we must understand the process before any procedure is undertaken. And that actually will help in saving the lives. This uh, boy had a very deep uh, injury and a deep cut that, for example, if this case was intervened at, uh, uh, let's say, a thicker level five, deep, based on that cut that he had, probably the survival will still not be there for this particular patient. So these are things that we need to make people understand that sometimes when you lose lives, the only blame that a patient have is the healthcare worker, uh, the doctor. But mostly when these patients are lost, the doctors also are human beings because they feel pain. Nobody will be in the hospital to see that the patient that they take care of, they lose, they lose them. To, make, to answer, now answer your question, we have to deliberately change the healthcare system that we have. We have a health system whereby 
every for this particular head injury, uh, if you look at the country, they will all be referred to Kenyatta National Hospital or to uh, Moi Teaching Referral Hospital or to KUTRH. And so if we don't deliberately ensure that the uh, health that has been 90% devolved in the county functions, then we'll always be having a reaction. If we do not have uh, the, 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 the specialists that are required to offer these services in all the 47 counties, yeah. if we do not have theaters in the counties, and if we do not have the uh, equipments that are necessary, like the, like the case of level, or think of level five, then it means that every Every time we'll be reacting when our case is, uh, arrives at KNH or at MTRH or at KUTRH because there's no investment. And this is happening when we know that healthcare is 90% devolved. So that's one thing that we must look at deliberately. Yeah. Is the healthcare only devolved when it comes to, uh, to, to other things, but not devolved when it comes to emergency care? Those are things that we need to put these governors and the council governors accountable for the healthcare. Yeah. And that, for that to happen, we have to look at it now. What uh, has been happening for the last five years in the counties? I will tell you, Trevor, that since 2016 to 2022, about 70% of doctors who have graduated, that is medical officers, pharmacists, dentists, and other healthcare workers, 70% of them have not been employed. It then means that anybody who goes to these hospitals, they will have a, a, lo a lot of waiting time. And the waiting time is because there are no doctors in those particular facilities. And there are no doctors because they've all been employed. Uh, there'll be a lot of, you'll go to the hospitals, you will be told a uh, uh, procedure is to be done. And uh, uh, probably it's an emergency case. Well, or, or, or that is uh, taking place, a, a surgeon will come and he's be told that the theater is in use. So the patient who is to be seen has to be referred for another date. Those are cases that are happening in the counties. Uh, you, you go to the hospital as a patient, you have a broken leg, you need to have an implant. The patient is, told to, is, 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 is instructed to buy this particular implant. And therefore, the surgeon has nothing to do. He has to wait for that implant to come. So those are the cases that happen in these particular counties and the hospitals. So if that is not mitigated, then we continuously have uh, cases whereby the patients can't get the services they need in the hospitals. The emergency services, if we don't improve it in the counties, whereby we have even the governors and all the people, all the stakeholders in healthcare or, or, or in the public able to get emergency services in, the, in, in those particular hospitals, then still the matters that we see in KNH and, uh, and, and, and other referrals will take place. Because this was a case of, of, of Travis from Thika. Yeah. What about if this person today have another incident in, 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 in Lamu or in Kuali yeah. or in Migori? They'll still be referred to the National Referrals Hospital. So we have to deliberately make sure that the level fives, level fours and level threes in the counties function as such. They don't just be uh, uh, gazetted as those levels, but in terms of service delivery, they are something else. Yeah. And the, 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 the medical council need to look at it strongly that if a hospital is a level five and it doesn't offer the services of level five, it should be downgraded to a dispensary or to a level three mm. so that it actually serves to that level that every public knows that this hospital is not a referral. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Honorable Linguris, how can this system be fixed? In fact, you can even localize it and talk about your own country as yeah. Uru. Trevor, I agree with the doctor that there are a lot of gaps that yeah. need to be, uh, to be looked at in the health care system of Kenya. First, I agree with him that there is inadequate funding because I have worked and I had an experience working in the county government when the health care system was, was devolved. Sometimes we see patients going to the, to the health facility that belong to the government. They can only see, see a doctor and they, they are written a, a prescription sheet and they are told to go and buy medicine outside the, 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 the facility, in the, maybe in the chemist or pharmacist outside, the commercial pharmacist outside the, the, the towns. So I think there is a problem because uh, the, the government is not supporting the healthcare system fully. There is inadequate and ir ir irrative um, uh, funding. Yeah. Sometimes there are also shortages of personnel. If you look at what is happening in the county governments, there are facilities that are manned by one, one person. For example, at the community level, you find a, a dispensary manned by one nurse. If in case he has some businesses out, they will close the facility, and that community will not be served until that health personnel comes back. I agree with him that there are also specialized services that are not available at the county levels. You can find a hospital, say they, they, they can put it at the level five, but you look at the services they offer, maybe they offer services at the level three. Mm -hmm. So if they cannot access, they cannot be able to provide 
what is required, a diagnostic like, uh, like the cancer. People from Samburu have to travel to Nairobi, and I think that's, that happens in the whole of the country. So if the government can look at um, empowering and uh, facilitating the health system, that we, in every county we have a diagnostic center, we have an emergency center, so that uh, even before trans, uh, referring the serious cases, cases to, for example, to Kenyatta Hospital, some kind of services or, or emergency has, be, has been attended at the county levels. So there are a lot of, 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 of needs that, that need to be done. Uh, also, in terms of personnel, we need also to change our attitudes for sure. Because uh, as a health personnel, they, they, they go through a, a thorough training and they know how to handle a case, a case from, from the outpatient to the inpatient until that patient goes out. Yeah. So we need also to have a change of attitude within our, our, our healthcare workers. Okay. Sometimes I talk to the, some of them and they, they seem demoralized. Because you are a doctor, you want to do a procedure. You are not facilitated, you don't have the equipment. Sometimes they miss anesthesia, and it's really frustrating also for them. So it needs an overhaul, yeah. for sure. All right. Honorable Wino, what do you suggest? Because, you know, there's also a, an argument that we do know that there are some healthcare practitioners who have their own businesses out there, therefore they refer their patients out there and deliberately make these other public institutions run down so that they have more customers on their end. I saw through, uh, through, I had a problem when uh, I was a chief officer of health in Homer Bay. Uh, even for uh, just simple surgeries lined up for them to do, they would rather do them in their own clinic rather than the public. So at the end of the month, I pay somebody have done maybe one or two mm. operations. It's a problem. Before, if you were a public servant, you would look at that as a career yeah. and just love it and do your work. Then I think uh, these guys made a lot of noise and that was lifted up. Mm -hmm. So they were, it was open that you can operate, you can do business and do it. To me, I would go back to the old uh, and say, okay, you want to be a doctor for a public facility or a public engagement? Please do so. Yeah. And we pay you well. You see where we are going wrong is... Um, we give lift service to, to healthcare system. But uh, from the health committee point of view, and I hope you will support this, we want to treat health as a development agenda so that you can invest yeah. in health. And you invest in those through three legs, the infrastructure, H H HR, and also the supplies. If you get that right, even those doctors who would like to do uh, private sites um, would be okay. Yeah. if they work for the public. But right now, most of the procedures, more, even simple ones, even treatment, even prescriptions, they would like to do at their clinic. Mm. That means they are also giving lip service to the public. Uh, sub so to me, I would like, and I'm proposing this in the in, in, in amendment bill, Peter, I'll bring, uh, that private practice should be private practice. And public practice should remain so. Having both is denying the, the Wanainchi their rights of, because they are the charge here, uh, we, are, we are now pushing for NIF to be covering everybody. Yeah. But a part of it will be in private, how would that work? So to your question, yes, this, 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 this dual action is not working for ordinary Kenyans. Yeah. All right, so Davji, what do you think about that? Because uh, Moshimu is saying that it will bring an amendment. It's only in the healthcare actually that conflict of interest is allowed blatantly because there's no other place where you can run a business similar to another one that you're already employed. I, I can't, for example, start a news station and I'm already here, but you can, and yet you're employed in the government. Is yeah. it fair, what uh, Mwishime is saying, to separate this to public service and private business? So if you go private, you're private. If you're public, you're public. Simple. You know, just to answer you, I think uh, it's not only in healthcare, it's just that healthcare is quite essential and uh, it's as much as it's essential, it's so, so as much as it's neglected, so that the issues that are in it are quite glaring. Uh, but it's not only a practice that is in Kenya, it's a practice that is worldwide, whereby you have a uh, time that you work for the public full time that you are supposed to work as per the agreement you have with the employer, because we have even CBA uh, 2017 that gives the time that the, the doctor has to work in the hospital, you need to work 40 hours a week. 
you need to work on this particular time. So mostly uh, those particular other times that uh, the doctors really do in the <coughs> private hospitals, the extra times you love it, maybe a weekend or a time that you are not supposed to be in the public. But currently, uh, the Kenya Medical Practitioner Dentist Councils, they give a license. You're given a license, not for the public or for the private. It's, it's a license to practice. And given that we do not have uh, uh, any, uh, I would say that, uh, uh, contradictions to when they do these particular procedures, because the doctors that actually work, if you look at all these uh, facilities, they work in, they, their action is to deliver services. And in the cases that uh, Omabe County, particularly, for this period that we have been, was a dead county in terms of healthcare. Any patient who went to, to, to go to Oma Bay will be asked to buy the gloves, to buy the syringes, to buy everything. So you'll be a doctor who will be in the other hospital, you want to offer services, but you will see that the patients that you want to serve dies because there are no equipment to assist them. And that's the point that you will see it is better to save this patient in a nearby hospital than to let them die. That's what actually has taken that direction. But ideally, we have had a discussion with even Nikal that what, at what point can we bring that thing of uh, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, conflict of interest against uh, practice, not only for doctors, because even the lawyers are the same, even the teachers, everybody can actually work, uh, whether it's the public or private, and also invest in business. So long as the timing of working in the public or in the private employer does not contradict your working with the private. And also, I want to say that so far, for the time I've been in the union, we've not got an official complaint from any, from any of the counties that a particular doctor, be it a medical officer or a specialist, was supposed to be in this particular hospital and he was found working in his private hospital. Those have not been there. There has been, uh, I will say, sensationalized uh, uh, information either from the media or from uh, the streets without any concrete uh, procedures on them. But as a country, we have labor laws whereby if I'm a chief officer, or I'm a medical, I'm a medical superintendent, or I'm in charge of a county, and I find that a particular officer is not at work. The procedures to follow for this, but so far we not add any of that, and that's why we always say these are all just stories that cannot be repudiated with, uh, uh, with, with evidence of their existence. Honorable Lenguris, are these just stories the way the doctor is saying? Because we, uh, we personally know that there are oh certain times when they refer people to their own private clinic. Surely, I think um, <laughs> I want to agree and I would support the bill when it will be brought to the parliament. Yeah. Because I think we need to separate the private and public, um, public uh, services. Because if you look at the, like now you go to Mama Lucy Hospital, you find the same doctor who will serve you, uh, will give you maybe poor services at, 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 at Mama Lucy. But when you meet that person in Nairobi Hospital, you will meet a totally a different person. He will treat you like, because you know. So this thing, I, I, I said earlier that the um, healthcare system has highly been commercialized in Kenya. And um, <clears throat> allowing the doctors to have their private uh, clinics, I think that denies uh, patients they are, they are basic right because health is actually a basic right for any any individual. So because if you find someone someone uh, working at, at, the, at a public facility at the same time he has his own personal clinic, he will spend less time in the public and have more time in, in his private clinic because you know he's doing he's doing business. So what we propose to the government that if these doctors can be paid well because they are looking for money when they open their their own clinics, if we can pay them well and also equip our healthcare facilities such that the doctors will do their, their procedures well, they will not miss any, any equipment, any drugs that they will require, and then they are facilitated well by the government. I think that, will, that one, the doctors will have to agree with us. Yeah. And uh, if you are employed by the government, you work for the government. If you are not working with the government, you do your private, uh, pub, uh, private business. Because those two cannot, cannot work together. We have seen a lot of gaps. Yeah. Uh, in this, and patients have been denied their rights in, in terms of accessing services. Yeah. Yeah. But nice. we know, are we focusing on the wrong thing here? Is, is it, it just poor service in public hospitals and infrastructure? Simple. So the private practitioners know what is needed. Dr. Davji would tell yeah. uh, KNH, for example, this mm -hmm. is what you need, but they don't buy it. So he has to buy it in his own private institution. Why should we victimize him? for failure of the government? It's kind of a chicken and egg, uh, you know, and I understand Dr. Teller, you know, he has to talk that way, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, you don't have to, you have to protect your territory. But um, you, you see what happens 
even if we say the, let the status quo be wh whatever it is now, all these lack, uh, items lacking in the public sector, somehow, in my in my in my purview, got their access to the private clinics. So even as you stock the supplies, they get their feet somewhere else. So uh, that that cannot fly. But what you are saying is, is correct. You know. My, my perception of healthcare system, which we have in record in this country. In fact, Kenya is leading in production of regulations, legislation, and everything. We visited Malaysia. <coughs> All the primary healthcare comes from our books, and ours are in the shelves, and we, we're just doing lip service. What could be very effective for our healthcare system, and it is in the health policy, is level one which is a household manned by community health work. It's a dispensary which can respond to all the emergencies, well equipped with HR motivated and equipment. It's a health center which can be linked to that dispensary for cases they cannot do. Before you come to sub-county referral hospital, which should handle, and I agree with him, should handle everything before you go to level five or six. But all these are poorly resourced. This is where we have a problem. And when we, we want to resource them, for example, uh, human resource for health, you want to put two nurses, three nurses in a dispensary, you will have to think of their salary, which forms the most uh, part of uh, the funding for county governments. So we call them recurrent expenditure. That's why I was trying to say, if we treat health as a development, we will not be capped by 35% requirement for financing, uh, I mean, for financing, uh, finances related to uh, recurrent. So we treat it as a development because you cannot build a dispensary there, very nice, very much equipped with one nurse. Uh, and it is five, I mean, eight to five services. Yeah. Most diseases come at night, there's no one. So yes, from level one to level four or level five, we are poorly resourced. And counties are also overwhelmed because most of their <coughs> allocation goes to personnel yeah. and, and there's no development in it. So what I'm trying to say at this time, how, however much we have tried since independent, we are still wanting in our healthcare system, okay. unless the government comes up yeah. with what I'm trying to suggest to invest, see it as an investment, yeah. not just uh, allocating funds, okay. but invest in finance. All right, uh, Dr. Taylor, before you take a break. I just wanted to <coughs> add some point on what he's saying. Yeah. Uh, actually. When you look at the counties <coughs> and with the devolved healthcare, if it remains devolved, we, can, we won't see any change, mm. especially the development of the human resource. And I'm saying this in the sense that we have all the counties, apart from four, apart from Kwale, uh, Tanarima, <coughs> and uh, uh, Mandera, the rest of the county are spending up to 45% of their budgets on uh, wage bills and all their resources, uh, uh, salaries. So it then means that there's no county which is going to employ any doctor or any nurse or any clinical or any healthcare workers in the, in the long term. So the, 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 the facilitating state will continue yeah. unless we have a centralized health service commission, which then now leaves the counties to withdraw the budget that is there. And now the budget for, uh, for healthcare workers goes to this particular uh, body. Because with that, we'll have many of the healthcare workers actually employed and county staffed with enough uh, workforce. There's one truth that as a country, we have really graduated in terms of production of healthcare workers, particularly for doctors. Kenya, 2004, we are only producing about 250 doctors per year. But in 20, from 2012, from 2016, the country is producing over 1,000 doctors per year. But their uh, absorptions into service is at 30%. We have now interns who graduated some in December last year, some graduated uh, June, some have been staying for one year, some six months, seven, five months after, the, after finishing university. More than 600 of them, they are staying with their parents at home. They have not been posted to the internship and get to offer services. So these are the scenarios that we are seeing in the country. And you see, if interns are delayed, you, you will go for internship. There are not no enough uh, consultants for you to get a good uh, experience, yeah. and then you leave the internship center, you stay, uh, you, 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 you demonstrate or you, you, you actually riot and complain to be posted for internship. Then you finish internship and stay at home for two, three years looking for a job. That's the scenario that we have. So if we do not really refocus 
the human resource of healthcare, then I'm, I'm very sure 10 years will be coming to talk when you have a more diversified healthcare than what we have now. All right. Let me take a quick break here. When I come back, we'll talk about this in just a bit. We'll talk about human resources. Let's take that quick break. We're back in just a short while.